Friends, in this excavator chapter, so far we have completed five videos. That is the evolution, hydraulics basics, critical components of the machine, hydraulic motor and hydraulic main pump. Now in this sixth video, I am going to explain about the circuit of the hydraulic excavator. That is main circuit and as well as the pilot circuit. This is the simple schematic of the hydraulic circuit in an excavator. Hydraulic circuit is the flow of the hydraulic fluid right from the discharge pump through the control device to the implement actuation device that is it may be a cylinder as shown here or maybe motor fitted for the swing end the travel device again returning back to the tank so this complete path is called the hydraulic circuit majority of excavators are fitted with the open loop hydraulic circuit open loop is nothing but the hydraulic coil which flows from the pump to the circuit again returning to the tank the hydraulic circuit in the excavator is mainly divided into two part part one is the main pressure circuit part two is the pilot circuit the part one which carries the high pressure hydraulic coil from the pump to the implementing implementation implements actuating devices the pilot circuit where the oil flows from the pilot pump to actuate the control valve this is how main circuit looks this is hydraulic pump a variable displacement axial piston pump which we discussed in detail in the previous video which delivers the oil of the required volume at a pressure of 380 bar from here the oil goes the main pressure regulator valve which controls the pressure when it reaches the limit from there the oil is going to the different control valves these are the different control valves these are called directional valves also then each direction will be having separate secondary valves then the actuating devices cylinders in case of the boom bucket or arm motors in case of the track left and left side track and right side track and also swing this is how the circuit looks from main pump pressurized oil regulating the pressure coming to the control valve and as per the actuation or movement of the spool inside the control valve oil goes to the respective cylinder and moves the cylinder either downward or upward so when the pressurized oil is coming one side one side one end the return oil comes out from the other end and goes to the tank this is how the hydraulic system works now let us go in detail about the this is how the operation of the control valve looks like see this figure here this is the control valve just to see how it is moving okay this is p pressurized oil inside coming here the spool is moving like this these ports are mating oil is whatever oil is entering here is coming and going to the cylinder or the motor same way when the spool is moved in this direction pressurized oil is coming and entering here and going to the other end of the cylinder this movement of the spool this is called the spool the movement of this spool is controlled by the pilot oil pressure that what will be discussed in later this is the pump the pressure relief valve and this is the control valve same thing this is the red line is the pressurized oil okay it's going when it's moving like this towards the right the pressurized is this oil going and entering 
this side of the cylinder so the oil pressure causes the movement of the complete piston rod outwards so whatever implement is connected to the cylinder will be moving outside outside or upside whatever may be again when the spool is moved in the opposite direction like this the oil whatever is coming here from the pump will be traveling in the other port so instead of going in this port it will be going in the other port and going to the opposite end of the cylinder making this complete cylinder rod with piston to retract or move inside here it is moved outside with the oil pressure here it is moving inside so that the implement device is moving in this is how the hydraulic system works you can see how the cylinder moves when the oil is coming here moves like this and return oil will go like this to the tank again when the oil comes here it moves like this return oil will go like this this operation is done through this control valve when the cylinder is moving like this you can see the cylinder is moving this complete implement also is moving whether it is a boom or the stick or the bucket whatever may be the movement of this implements is depending upon the movement of the cylinder in and out this is how the control valve looks like it is mantle control valve normally the excavators modular control valves are fitted modular in the sense each block comprising four to five sections of control valves okay so like that depending on the excavator size there will be two blocks or one block this is how it looks when it is assembled these are all the spools these are the return springs this is called the barrel these are all the inside seals okay and these are where the hoses are fitted here to supply the high pressure oil so these are these slots are for the oil passages this grooves and slots for the implements like boom and arm where the heavy loads are to be lifted two sections of the control valve we used and for travel as the entire mission has to be moved two sections of the control valves are used and for the operations like bucket and swing one section of the control valve is used normally the control valve also is provided with an optional valve to connect the implements like the sizzle the hammer etc this is the pilot circuit there will be a charging pump which delivers the fluid at 30 to 40 bar normally it will be a simple gear pump and from the pump oil goes to the pilot control valve which is operated through the joysticks then oil flows to the respective control valve the oil is flowing in this direction spool is moved this direction and the return oil will come like this and if the oil is flowing in the opposite direction spool will spool will be moving in the opposite direction and return oil will be going to the tank this is how the pilot valve the oil from the pilot circuits this is a light blue color comes and pushes this spool in either directions this is the main pressure oil this is the pilot oil the cut section of the pilot valve looks like this generally the pilot will all be having six ports the center one is the oil inlet port which is coming from the pump 
this blue one will be the oil which is going out to the tank and this one two three four are the ports used to supply the oil to the main control valves pool how it functions when a joystick is joystick is pressed by the operator this is number one this inside it will be having piston sliding smoothly inside the barrel having some seals to prevent the leakage of the oil so when this piston is pressed with this joystick the spool is plunger is pushed downwards the whatever oil is available here will be going to the respective spool as soon as this lever is released by the operator with the help of the inbuilt spring force this plunger is pushed upwards closing this passes closing this passes stopping the oil flow the construction how it looks the pressurized oil then written oil then these are for the implements this is about the hydraulic cylinder hydraulic excavator uses the double acting cylinders because the piston rod has to move out and in as per the requirement the piston rod is moved the implement is raised the piston rod is taken inside the implement will be lowered and the cylinder will be cylinder is having mainly four components the first one is called the barrel which is made with a quality steel seamless tube the center portion is the seamless tube and both ends are welded one end with a solid yoke which is fitted to the structure of the excavator supporting with a pin and bushing the other end of the barrel is welded with a which is called the head this is the barrel head which holds the seals oil seals and also oil passes and all these are welded and the cylinder is drilled and honed with a precision to freely slide this piston inside and also to maintain the precise gap so that the oil is not leaked from one end to the other end this is how the barrel looks like and the second part is the piston rod this is a piston rod it's a solid steel tube one end is fitted with the piston and the other end is welded with the yoke which is connected to one of the implement through the pin and bushing this is chrome plated and for the strength and also for the corrosion proof and also for smooth sliding of the rod within the seals this is how piston looks these grooves are provided to accommodate the piston seals these are the seal rings the seal rings are made with special polythene material and special rubber to withstand for the high pressure and the high temperature so some seals are used over the piston to prevent the leakage of the oil from one end to the other end and some seals are used in the rod end that is in the barrel head to prevent the oil leakage from this end of the chamber and this white one is called the viper seal this is provided to avoid the dust entry inside the dust entry to the cylinder and also to clean this cylinder rod during every movement 
next is the high pressure hose the high pressure hoses which were designed to work around 500 and 550 bar are used in the hydraulic excavators with suitable end fittings because the working pressure will be normally up to from 250 to 350 bar so for safety purpose 500 bar pressure hoses are used made with steel core inside and with multiple layers of quality rubber and these are the seal rings used in these slots as gaskets to prevent the oil leakage these are different types of the end fittings used to the hoses mainly the hoses are used to get the flexibility during the implements movement next part are the filters two types of filters are there in the hydraulic excavator one is the main line filters which are made with the paper element these are generally 10 micron size filters but these filters main filters are placed in the return line of the hydraulic circuit because these paper elements cannot withstand in the main line as the main line the pressure will be around 300 bar however there will be high pressure filters will be used in the main line which are made with steel mesh please go through this four pages notes in case you have any doubts you can always contact me through the email Thank you.